Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday mountain weather update. I want to go to where it's snowing right now. First stop is in southern Utah at Bryan Head Ski Area. And you can see it is snowing there right now. That area of low pressure, that circulation around it is bringing waves of snow through southern Utah and also parts of Arizona. So I do expect accumulation at Bryan Head today. Uh, here's uh, Arizona Snow Bowl. They're reporting four inches in the last 24 hours, and you're just going to have to wait on the next uh, wave of uh, snow to to roll in there. So I expect additional accumulation at uh, uh, Arizona Snow Bowl as well. All right, here's radar across the west. So notice nothing going on over most places. It's dry. But if you look to the south, southern Utah into Arizona, you can see the rotation here around the area of low pressure. Now, there's not a lot of snow here, but just bands of snow kind of moving around this area of low pressure. The next stop for this thing is going to be the Four Corners into New Mexico, southwest Colorado, um, into northern New Mexico as well, around Tahoe, Ski Santa Fe, and Angel Fire. So the low is going to be moving off to the east. Up in the northeast, you've got a series of clippers moving through. The latest one, you can see the, uh, the snow right now across a lot of... Uh, the northeast. There's another clipper coming in behind it, dropping into the Great Lakes. So it's one right after another with light to light to moderate accumulations, um, and then potentially a heavier accumulation down the road. But let me just give you the lay of the land on water vapor. So on this, your oranges and reds are going to be your drier air in the low levels. The moisture's in the whites and the blues, and there's our area of low pressure. It's really slow and moving at snail's pace, but again, slowly moving towards the four corners, Arizona. Uh, into New Mexico, southern Utah, southern Colorado, all will be affected by this area of low pressure. Then the flow behind it, big dip in the jet out here. This whole area is what's going to be part of our pattern change for the very end of the month into the first week of February, which should bring a lot of activity to the west and some real snow bullseyes. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about those in this in this update. Here are my bullet points uh, this morning. So we've got the four corners low, and then the new pattern coming early February with big bullseyes in the Pacific Northwest, interior BC, also Idaho and Wyoming. Those appear to be, in my opinion, where we're going to see some of the biggest totals, and I think feet of accumulation likely in the forecast for this. Here's my snow timeline. Best odds of snow. In Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So Big Sky, you've got uh, light to moderate snow coming late 131 to 21, and then heavy 22 and 23. The Wasatch, you're going to have to wait until 2122 for moderate to heavy snow accumulation. Things looking a touch better in this morning's update versus yesterday for snowfall. In the Tetons, this is probably one of my biggest bullseyes for the Interior uh, Rockies. Uh, late 131. 2 1, 2 2, and 2 3. So a long duration snow event coming for the Tetons. Colorado, it's mainly in the southern mountains. I don't have a whole lot now for the central and northern mountains. And in the southern mountains, it's late 128 into the morning of 130 for light to moderate accumulations. Interior BC, you could have heavy snow on 131. Tahoe, moderate to heavy. Afternoon 131 to 21, and you can see the numbers for the northeast, potentially moderate to heavy on 131. Uh, let's just dip into Alta Snowbird just quickly here with the, the forecast mediagram effective at 9,000 feet. So there's today the 28, 29, 30, and 31. Notice no accumulation, no precipitation through early 131. Again, in the timeline, you're going to have to wait until uh, 2 1 and 2 2 for moderate to heavy snow accumulation. So it is definitely a waiting game there, and the temperatures are going to be warming. Um, look at some of these uh, some of these numbers. So this afternoon, 26. Tomorrow, 30 degrees at 9,000 feet, and then 27 on Thursday. Now, eventually, once we get into uh, the weekend, the numbers will start to come down as the cold front moves in. We'll start to have some snow production, but um, it's going to be pretty mild up into the uh, the weekend. Okay, let me take you down to Taos, New Mexico. One of the areas that should get good snowfall in the coming days, and you can see it on the time height. I'm looking for green here. This is a 72-hour forecast. You read this from right to left, and you can see the green pops up uh, on the afternoon of the 29th through the 30th. So that's going to be the time frame for New Mexico to pick up snow accumulation at Taos. And in fact, 
this model, you, you can see it there in the afternoon of the 29th through the 30th, cranks out anywhere from uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 inches of accumulation in Taos. And I agree with that for the most part. I think 10 inches is probably a good number for Ski Santa Fe, Angel Fire, and Taos. Um, we got to talk about the jet stream because this is what's going to usher in this pattern change for the West. But right now, it's all about the area of low pressure that is almost cut off, but you can see it there spinning over uh, parts of uh, Southern California, Arizona, Nevada, Southern Utah. So what I'm looking for here, these are jet levels at about 30,000 feet. The brighter colors are your stronger winds. That's what's really guiding these storm systems around. So that's what I'm looking for. So we'll start this out at lunchtime today. And I'll move this into the future. All right, here's late today. There's early tomorrow morning, the 29th. Look at the low moving through the four corners into New Mexico and southern Colorado. This is late on Wednesday, the 29th. Here's early Thursday, the 30th. Now, the question is, does this low spin up or strengthen in southeast Colorado or near that preferred position around Albuquerque? It might a little bit. And then how far north does it push the moisture? Does it make it into Colorado Springs? Does it make it into Denver? Does it make it up through the foothills to the Continental Divide? That's really a big question mark. Not sure yet. Um, here we are by lunchtime on Thursday the 30th. The low is moving out into the plains where we're going to have some showers and thunderstorms and heavy rain through Texas and Oklahoma. All right, here's late on Thursday. That low moves out and it's headed for the, uh, the east coast, the northeast. Here's early on Friday. Here's early on Saturday, February 1st. So totally different pattern. Strong jet stream moving in from the, uh, the west coast. You can see the brighter colors, a nice jet streak ushering in. Um, lift, a lot of moisture in one to two different storm systems. So we're going to start to pile up the snow in the Pacific Northwest, Interior, BC, Idaho. And it, I mean, it's a direct target right downstream into the Tetons. So big lift there. And on that northern or that southern periphery, would be the, the Wasatch. Um, so at times that flow might come down and nick or brush the Wasatch and the high Uintas. All right, here we are on late February 1st, much of the same. Uh, here's um, uh, lunchtime on Sunday, February 2nd. Here's early Monday, February 3rd. Now watch what happens with the jet. Here's lunch, there's late on the 3rd. Here's early on the 4th, there's late on the 4th. There's early on the 5th, and here's early on the 6th. Look what's happening. The jet's moving to the south. It's focusing more on California. You can see where that tan color is coming in. That would help direct more moisture into the interior through Nevada, Utah, and still into Wyoming, and maybe into Colorado, but this is way down the road. Okay, let's talk about snow accumulation over time. We'll start this at lunchtime today. So on this, your, your light blues are over here on the, uh, the, the legend. It's all under three inches. That's light snow accumulation. Man, you can see the, the highway for these clippers coming out of Alberta, parts of Canada, Saskatchewan, running right down through the, uh, the Great Lakes into the Northeast. Okay, here we are by late today. There's early tomorrow morning. You've got the four corners low. You've got heavy lake effect in some places up there off of um, Lake Ontario and, and obviously some clipper snow as well. Uh, here's lunchtime tomorrow. There is uh, late on Wednesday. Whenever you start to see the greens pop up, that's three to six. And, and so you can see what this model does. Once it arrives in New Mexico, you've got good snow through northern New Mexico and southern Colorado, but how far north does that snow go? It might make it up to the springs, maybe into Denver. We'll see. Um, okay, here's early on Thursday, the 30th. This model does bring it up pretty far to the north. Um, all right, here's late on Thursday. The low is gone. Now we look to the north. Here we are on early February 1st. Here comes our pattern shift with the first of a couple different areas of low pressure. You're looking at heavy snow accumulation uh, through the Pacific Northwest, interior BC, Idaho, potentially northwest Montana, and definitely from Sun Valley all the way east into the Tetons. So big stuff there. It's one of the issues, though, for parts of the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, and eventually California will be snow levels with this. They're going to start pretty high. Like in Mount Ashland, I'll show you my numbers for that. Half of the precip might fall as rain or a mix. Um, here we are early on Saturday. Okay, so a little bit of that makes it into Colorado, but not much. 
Not much at all. It does seem to make it down into the uh, into the Wasatch, the High Uintas, and certainly northern the, nor the, the northern mountains of Utah. Um, okay, let's move this ahead. Here's late on the first. There's late on the second, and man, I mean that flow is just directly targeting the Tetons, and some new snow right there on the second. That could be moderate, maybe even heavy, moderate snow accumulation for the northeast. Um, here's early on February 3rd, um, here's early on the 4th, um, here's early on the 5th, now it's the Sierra's turn to get some snow, remember the jet's sinking to the south here, um, here's early on the 6th. Okay, let's look at the numbers, Here my here's my official forecast. So all of today, through the 2nd, we'll start in the Wasatch, I've got 6 to 10 inches, assuming that you get brushed at times by the flow. The real bullseyes up there in the Tetons. I've got one to two feet of, well, more than that. I've got two to two and a half feet of accumulation. 24 inches at Grand Targhee. I've got 30 on the nose for Jackson Hole. And there might be additional snow beyond this down the road for the Tetons. I've got tens up there at Big Sky, Bridger Bowl. Eight to ten up there in northwest Montana. A foot or more, 10 to 20 inches through a lot of Idaho. I mean, you're getting... Excellent overrun snow. A foot there through Interior BC, Kicking Horse, Revel, Stoke, Fernie, Red Mountain, less as you drop down into Bam Sunshine, but could see 10 up there at Marmot Basin. Uh, one to three feet of accumulation in the Pacific Northwest, from Whistler to Baker to Rainier to Crystal. Uh, quite a bit there at uh, Bachelor and Timberline. And there's my number for Mount Ashland. It's really a blend because some of it's going to be rain. Uh, Shasta at the higher elevations, looking at three, maybe even four feet of accumulation, then less. But late in the period, we'll start to pick up accumulation. Tahoe down towards Mammoth. In Colorado, most of it's in southern Colorado. And again, it comes with that southern track low early on. Um, four to eight inches through the San Juans, potentially eight to 12 from Kuchara down through Tahoe, Ski Santa Fe, and Angel Fire. Okay, in the northeast, you've got a few different chances, including that moderate chance I believe that was on the second. Let me check the uh, the timeline out here. Um, uh, so light, uh, moderate to heavy on the 31st, and then light, maybe moderate on the second. So you can see how I get to these numbers. It's a rolling accumulation, uh, anywhere from, say, 8 to 12 inches across Vermont, New Hampshire, a little bit less up in Maine, a little, obviously less in Massachusetts. But Snow Ridge could be the beneficiary of quite a bit of lake effect snow with potentially 18 inches of accumulation. All right, guys, we'll end on the big western map here, and this is an exciting period. I mean, if this flow sets up like it's gonna, I mean, we're gonna have some serious bullseyes with feet of accumulation in places across the west. All right, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.